Hi there. Welcome to 2024. Happy New Year. What better way to start off the year than with a Esperanto grammar lesson? And today we're going to talk uh, mainly about the different ways in Esperanto we say leak. There's a leaking pipe or instead of garlic and onions, I want to go to the grocery store and buy some leeks. I'm also going to talk about the difference between lecky and leaky, so I hope you're feeling lucky. Uh, those are similar verbs, so how can we come up with a little device in our minds to keep them straightened out? Now, if you've got a little eight-year-old sitting in your lap learning alongside you, uh, yes, I will talk briefly about going potty, like taking a leak in that sense. What is the most appropriate, common ways of saying that in Esperanto? Not gonna get into too much detail though, so I wouldn't worry about it. If my nephews or nieces were watching this, it's fine. But yeah, that's a thing that people have to say. My first Esperanto conversation uh, was, I think, with Ellen Eddy saying, where's the bathroom? Like, she was trying to sign me in at an event. Where is, qui es sus la necesario? Like, I, it's an important thing to know for Esperanto gatherings, so we're gonna get to that at the very end. But let's get started with taking a leak. All right, leaky. Leaky means to leak, all right? Uh, it's, you know, some dripping pipe is happening there, uh, you know, uh, that is the word you're gonna use, g leakas. Uh, it's an intransitive verb, uh, you don't leak something, um, you would leak igi, uh, Gene, but, you know, uh, if you're talking about what is it doing, it is intransitively by itself leaking there. Uh, and a way to remember that leaky is to leak is, if you peaky, it will leaky. I've got a little uh, balloon there, uh, right, like a water balloon, and shooting an arrow at it punctures it, and what's gonna happen? It's gonna drip water out, right? Also, uh, look at that exclamation mark. I was gonna have like those reflective looking things on the balloon to make it look 3D, but I'm terrible at drawing. So this is an exclamation mark, right? Leaky has two letter I's, lowercase i's in it, I, K, I. So think of those letter I's as an upside down pipe that is drip, drip, dripping. So leaky is dripping water through those pipes, whereas lecky is totally different, all right? So uh, if you peaky, peaky is like to stab, to sting, to puncture, um, you know, like a peaky low would be like a stinger on a bee. Uh, so if you puncture it, it will leak. If you peaky, it will leaky. Uh, so leaky is to leak, and then lecky here, lecky is to lick. Leaky, lecky, very similar. Uh, you know, so I could see someone thinking, oh, to lick, uh, licky. Well, well, there is no short I sound, there's no I, I, H sound in Esperanto, and that leads to problems with pronunciation sometimes. You gotta make all of your I's into a long E sound, leaky, and your E's into an E-H sound, lecky. So lecky is to lick something. And a way to remember that is this. If it bleck us, it also leck us. What is blecky? Blecky is like meh, like a sheep or you know, cattle would, would bleat uh, or you know, make their animal noises. So if it meh, you know, makes sound, then it'll also you know, lick you, lick your hand, you know, get the you know, sugar out of your hand if it's a horse, uh, for example. So animals often blecky and they often lecky. So if it bleck us, it also lecky us. Also, the shape of the letter E kind of looks like a open mouth in profile, right? Uh, and so I made a little E here. It's like a little mouth going, Lah! I'm gonna lick uh, there. Now, as I'm looking at examples of lecky in the Textaro, textaro.com, where you can see it's a search of lots of Esperanto grammar, classical stuff like Hamlet, you know, Aesop's fables, proverbs, etc. Uh, and so you can see, okay, this word is in a dictionary once, but no one's ever used it in any novels or any magazine since. And it's a way to see, all right, practically speaking, what are people using? How do people use this actual verb? So I searched in there for lecky, and what did I find? I found that Zamenhof used the expression pot lekisto, a pot licker, one who licks pots. I thought, yeah, I've heard that phrase before, a pot licker. Ah, this pot licker, this worthless human over there. But then as I was researching, I found a couple of, of results of the etymology, the history behind that. One is it's like a person who's so poor or so 
gross. They'll go around licking up, you know, the food at the bottom of a pot. Uh, that even in some like Icelandic cultures, it's almost like a little gnome or leprechaun that will lick up all, you know, lick the pots clean or something. I saw that, but also in Southern American recipes, many of them call for pot liquor, L-I-K-K-E-R, as in like pot liqueur, as in liquid. So when you're boiling beans or greens, uh, the residue, the, the draft, the dross, the, the crud left over that glaze at the bottom of the pan, that is the pot liqueur. And that is very full of nutrients and is used um, almost like a gravy for cornbread, things like that. But it's not saying licking up the pot, it's the liquid on a pot. So if you're talking about a pot liquor saying, someone who's going around licking pots, then yeah, pot lequi, pot lequisto is the way to go. But uh, in some cases, you're talking about the, the, the extra stuff left over at the bottom of a pot after doing some cooking, that would be a different word. Pot recremento, perhaps? Recremento is like, Leftover coffee grounds, the leftover waste after you get rid of something, the, the remains uh, after something else is recremento. So the pot recremento, maybe something like pot liquid to be more specific, but that's what I would say. If you're talking about pot liquor as in the leftover residue, say recremento. Now, lecky can mean, if you looked on vortaro.net, the poivo, la plena illustrita vortaro, uh, it gives several meanings for many verbs that can mean multiple things, sometimes more of a imaginative uh, meaning and then a more literal meaning. So in Esperanto, in, in literature, you're going to see that sometimes lecky can mean sucking up, like licking that person's hand, almost like kissing their butt uh, to your boss, like, oh, please, like brown nosing, you know, please like me, please give me a raise, I'm going to work extra hard for you in a groveling sort of way. Lecky can mean that. Lecky can also mean polishing up, like we would say, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll polish that you know, book I'm working on, and it's almost done, but not done yet. Uh, you'll find an example of lecky sein versoin, to, to lick one's verses in a poem, as in to polish it up. We don't ever use that in English to mean that. Uh, what do we say usually when we're saying lick uh, outside of, you know, literal licking? We're saying, well, if you can't lick them, join them. If you, you know, oh, I've got them licked. I've got them defeated. I've got them conquered. I've got them figured out. Or, you know, oh boy, you know, uh, it's, it's like to go against someone. It goes back to like 1930s was more common to say that, but still like, man, he's got me licked. You know, like he's got me defeated or beaten. Don't do that. Don't think that that works uh, in translating things into or out of Esperanto. No. Uh, I would say if you're still learning the language, don't get too flowery and creative using these other meanings. Those seem like vestiges from other cultures and idioms, but we don't say, oh man, he sure is, you know, licking that or, you know, he's got it licked. Don't say that. Not defeating or conquering or attacking someone, um, but it can mean those things. So you might see in an old book, uh, I think Zamenhof even used those other meanings of, of lecky. Um, so now you won't be completely confused by it. Uh, let's see here. Porreo. What is porreo? Porreo means a leek, as in a vegetable similar to an onion or a shallot or a garlic. Uh, the long things, if you've seen Veggie Tales, you've probably seen some leeks in there. Uh, how can you remember porreo means a leek that you're going to buy at the store? Uh, well, the silly but simple way that I would remember it is don't pee on an Oreo while taking a leek. So I actually bought months ago, I was first, I was gonna make this lesson ages ago, I'm finally getting around to it today. I went to the store and bought some Oreos I was gonna you know, take to a party and I saved a couple Oreos and put them away and oh, I'm gonna use this and hold this Oreo up and it was even a mint green Oreo and I was gonna be like, oh look, you know, uh, don't pee on this when you take a leak. Uh, but there you go, porreo, pee Oreo, porreo. Finally, if you need to say to pee, you could say uzi la necesseon to use the necessary place. Maltrinki, the opposite of drink, uh, is to pee. Uh, I've heard someone say that just this month. Uh, oh, I need to go maltrinki. And you could be more literal and say PC to piss or urini to urinate. I would only talk about urini if you're talking about like a kitten you're taking care of. Oh, it hasn't urinated today. Normally you'd say, I need to use the restroom, or I need to maltrinki. Don't say like 
I need to take a leak. I need to see a man about a horse. I need to make water. Don't use flowery phrases. Be literal and just say, can I use the bathroom? All right? Thank you guys so much for watching and have a wonderful day. Patrons, thank you so much for your support in making these videos and for helping people explore Esperanto.